right okay welcome to my godly seed like i said earlier we do have a host um, we, we have a guest in our midst, in our midst, and we will be i mean we'll hand the 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 floor over to her in a moment but i just want to encourage you this is a platform where we do not accept no for an answer it doesn't matter what your doctors have said doesn't matter what your body has said doesn't matter what the society has said to you doesn't matter it doesn't matter what matters is that god said he desires a godly seed from your union and and God gives us God lists it in more than one way. Okay, so you have to be open minded as well. God gives us God lists it from the, from our bodies. God sends children to to us in different shapes and forms. And so we believe God that all that we would not be denied of the heritage of God. The Bible says children are the heritage of God. So we would not be denied of the heritage of God. We will partake of the heritage of God. And I want you to know that. God is the one that is able to bring conception. The Bible says in the book of Ruth, that I think it's Ruth chapter 4 verse 13, that even though Boaz was the one that went into Ruth, but God gave the conception. Read it. It was God that gave the conception. It is the power of God that initiate, that, that uh, enables the conception. And I want you to know that God will never hold back any good thing from you. Hallelujah. So thank God for your lives. I believe that that by the power of the name of Jesus, every desire that God has planted in your heart to raise children from him, for him, he will fulfill those desires in the name of Jesus. I hope you don't think that you are the one that is more interested in the children than God. God has a higher stake in you having children than you have. God's stake is that he said he needs a godly seed because with the godly seed, he's able to fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And that is why I want to encourage you don't give up. To, to give up is to say, you know what, God, you don't even know what you're doing. You're not powerful enough. But if you would say, Lord, you are interested in this. Oh, my God, you are a stakeholder. I join forces with you to receive what you have made available in Christ. Amen. So I welcome you here in the name of Jesus as we take time to pray along these lines. And we believe that the Holy Spirit, who, who, who Jesus said he will be with us forever, Jesus I said, I'm going away, but I'll send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will be with us forever. We believe that the Holy Spirit will help us to navigate this whole terrain where we're able to pray aright and receive what belongs to us. Remember, it's not about God giving, it is about you receiving. God has already given given us. God has already sent Jesus to make available to us everything that he has in his treasury. There's nothing in God's treasury that is not available to you right now as you are on this platform. There's no such thing as, oh, maybe God doesn't want me to have it. Maybe he's saying yes. Maybe he's saying no. Maybe he's saying wait. God is not confused. He has made up his mind. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. All of the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are what? Yes and amen. And the promise of God in Christ Jesus is for you to increase and to multiply. And it came all the way from Genesis. Jesus has consummated the covenant of our God on our behalf. And now we can lay hold on his provision. Amen. So sit back, rest, rest assured that the Holy Spirit is here to help you and I. Well, without further ado, I'm going to welcome my sister, um, my sister, Sister Biola Olowu, she's right here. She has a fantastic testimony in this arena, and I know that it will bless you. And she's also a prayer leader, so she's going to be she's going to share a little bit of her testimony, and she'll lead us in prayers. And by the time we are done, I'm sure you'll be stirred up to continue to press and press and receive everything that God has in store for you. God bless you, Sister Biola. Thank you for um, allowing the Spirit of God to use you this morning. Um, I don't know if you want to use your camera. If you do, we're very much excited to see your face, but if you're not able to, that's fine. But please take over the floor and share your heart with us. Amen. Are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, good. good morning. Thank you, Pastor Gatha, and thank you so much for inviting me here. 
Um, thank you, mommies and daddies of nations on the call. Um, I believe God has an appointment with you this morning, and I believe God will do what he alone can do for you today. And it's not me, but it is the Holy Spirit that would minister to everyone today in Jesus' name. And as we go into this, I just want to sing this song before I share my testimony. All the glory must be unto the Lord, for he is worthy of my praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We return every glory to God for the great and mighty things he has done and will do in the lives of every mommy and daddy on this call. As um, Pastor Agatha already introduced you, my, my name is um, Abiola Olo. I'm a daughter of Zion. I've been married for, before I had my miracle baby, had been married for 22 years. And um, one, it's been a journey, a, a great journey, a journey of faith, a journey of trust in God, a journey of holding on to the promises of God, a journey of just being rugged and determined that this would not pass me by. I kept saying to, the God, to God that this class I keep going to, one day I'm going to pass this class. I'm going to move to the next class. And to God be the glory, he moved me to the next class, which is why I'm able to come here today to share the testimony of Jesus, the story of what Jesus did in my life. And I believe the Bible, that's the word of God that says in Revelation that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So as you listen to my testimony, our testimony today, I believe that the same God that visited my family will visit you in Jesus' name, and you would be the next testimony to be shared in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll start with um, the fact that so many things we did, which I will share with you. As you can imagine, 22 years testimony cannot be shared in the space of an hour for five minutes to an hour, but I will try and summarize it and just follow God's leading. I believe that everyone on this call, you would hear what God wants you to hear. Not, what, not all have got to say, but there's a particular word for you, for each person. And that's what I just believe the Lord will speak to me. So I'm just his microphone and it's the power behind it right now. We did so many things, but I would just like to submit to you, mommy and daddies, today that one thing I know we found was we found mercy of God mercy found us the Bible says in Romans 9 15 the Lord says I would have mercy on whom I choose to have mercy on and I would have compassion on whom I have compassion on it's so it is about God it is about him giving showing mercy and it was his mercy that we found he said that it's not of him who wills nor of him who runs but it is of God that shows mercy it is God that actually showed us mercy and I believe that same mercy he has it in abundance and he will show it to everyone on this call today be it for your believing for others be it your standing here for yourself the God of mercy the God of favor would favor you and will show you mercy in Jesus name for 22 years, so many things were done. <laughs> we initially, we, we got married. We weren't young when we got married because I had my son at the age of 53, just three months oh. to my 54th birthday. Oh my God. So we were not young when we got married. We uh, So that's why we, one of the three things we were praying for was when I meet my husband, everything will go through quickly. We got married and we would not be in debt. That was one of the things we prayed for. And we prayed that on our honeymoon, we'll get pregnant. So those were three prayer requests. The one prayer request, the first one was okay. The second was bang, bang. The third one. So when we went to honeymoon, we came back and I saw blood. I was like, oh, oh. This is not the way we wanted it. And because the period was slightly late anyway, so I thought like we were already pregnant because we had prayed it and we believed. We were already been believers anyway. And um, I cried. I cried. My husband was like, oh, it's only the first month. We don't need to cry and stuff. We wait and 
we just let it go. But I didn't know that that crime would go on for so many months, so many years. You know, I just thought it was just that first one. And it continued and it continued and it continued. The crying continued until God delivered me from crying on my monthly period when I read Bishop Oyedepo's book that says, you shall not be barren. So I, I implore you, if you haven't read that book, please um, try and read it. Because one of the key things I learned from that book, you shall not be barren, is that when you see your monthly period, it is just blood running through your body. It doesn't mean you're not pregnant. One of the things Bishop Oyedeko said was that if you cut your hand, maybe you're cutting a, you're using a knife and you cut your hand mistakenly and blood comes out, that doesn't mean you've miscarried. So for me, that delivered me. So when next I saw my period after reading that, it was like, it's just excess blood. So that's what I'll call it. It's excess blood, you know. So God is um, a faithful God. One of the, the most important thing for me during this period, I call it the journey because it's actually a journey we went to, you know, went through. And um, one of the key things in that journey also was the word of God. I did not joke with the word of God. Thankfully, I was born again before I got married and had been reading faith books, have been a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministry and so many ministries like that. And the word of God, I kept on reading this word. I kept on standing on the word of God. I kept on confessing them, searching the scriptures for this issue that was of a major concern to me and researching that scripture, finding it confessing it as well as meditating on it. This is one of the things we've been taught during the prayer boot camp that we just finished, meditating on the word and imagining the word was happening, what you have read was what you were seeing, you know. And I took what I call pregnancy capsules. Now, there's so many scriptures I read. Oh, thank thank you for the person that talks about um, Yewande Sakios' book, because that's one of the books I was going to also recommend. Um, I took pregnancy capsules. What I, I learned it from another ministry years back. So I would write down scriptures. I'll sit down, get a glass of water, just like you're taking your medication. You know, the word of God says in Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, he says, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine hair unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health unto their flesh. So on that scripture, I would write the scriptures that I wanted. I'll take a glass of water. I printed the scriptures out. I mean, I'll read. There were so many scriptures that I read as pre pregnancy capsule. I could just drop some of the scriptures to you if you want to like um, write them down. Genesis 35 verse 11, for instance, I'll get a glass of water, I'll read it out, I'll say Genesis 35 11, it says, also God said unto me, Abiola, I'll put my name, all my Bibles has got my name on when it comes to the <laughs> of the womb, everywhere I've put my name on it. God said to Abiola, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations will proceed from you. Kings will come forth from your body. So I'll say, Daddy, I take this as my medication today. I will swallow, I'll take, open my hand, swallow it. I'm swallowing the scripture and I'll drink water. <laughs> I've taken my medication. I'll go to the next one. I'll do that so many times like that. So that oh. that word became, it was inside of me. It became something in the inside of me. It became something that the enemy could not steal. Even when opposition came, opposition of science, opposition of this and that came, those words were what God it used to help me. There were so many scriptures which I could quickly mention. So maybe someone can help put you on the chat. Yeah. So that you um, mention, just mention you. the chapters and um, the reference. I will reference. just type them on. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 20. Genesis 35, 11. Math Matthew 1, 18. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9 and 14. 2 Kings 4, 17. Genesis 30, 22. Oh, sorry, and 2 Kings. 2 Kings 4, 17. Okay. Genesis 
30, 22, and 23. Luke 1, 35 to 37. So those were the pregnancy scripture I was taking and I was following because the Bible says that the word of God is spirit and it's life, you know, mm -hmm. and he upholds all things by the word of his power. So we take that word in and that was, that really, really helped me. The word, holding on to the word, standing on the word helped me so much. Another word that helped me was so much was um, Exodus, which I'll come to because I want to link that to our kingdom service. Exodus 23, 25 to 26. My, my, when you wake me up in the middle of the night, that scripture, I would say it out because I just believed it so much. Another thing we did was praise, <laughs> praise time. I would have nights when I would be downstairs in the living room. I'll carry the, my children's clothes and I'll be dancing. Sometimes I'll sing the song myself. Sometimes I'll play Christian songs, dancing with those clothes, moving around, praising God, believing that God I am dancing before you with this clothes. One day I would dance before you carrying my baby. And that was what God did. And as he did it for me, he would surely do it for you. Whenever the devil wanted to bring um, the doubt or anything negative, I would just switch to praise. Praise worship songs, even the ones I can't sing in Yoruba, I would still be pray, praising it, singing it along with them. And this really helped me so that my I was in the attitude of rejoicing. My at, I, I was a joyful person naturally, but with this situation, I realized that I needed to grab into more praise and thanksgiving. You know, oh. when you see me, you see me laughing, which was why when we had our children, a lot of people in our church, they did not know that we were waiting on God. When they saw my husband and I, they assumed that we had grown children that were in university or maybe we had children back home in Nigeria. They didn't realize that we were waiting on the Lord because I was there at everybody's naming ceremony that I could attend. I was usually sowing seed to a lot of kids. So I had a cheerful disposition. Please do not wear whatever you're going through. Do not wear it on the face, on your oh. face. Do not let the enemy see that at, at all. Because of the fact that I was like, Satan, you cannot win this battle. You will not oh. see me on my face. You cannot see it on my face. I would dress up. I would, you know, look like a child of God that I am, not what I am going through. Nobody uh, could see what I'm going through on my face. The only uh, way you could know I was waiting for a child was maybe if they, there was a prayer meeting that it was called and I came out, that's the only way you would know. But in my actions, you could not know that I was waiting for children. I was serving in the children's church, not because I was waiting for children, because I was serving in the children's church even before I got married. I've just, naturally, I love children. And I was serving genuinely with a genuine life. So in all the churches I've been to, I've always served in the children's ministry and the prayer ministry. So I was serving those children because I saw them as giants of God. I don't see them as just children going to children's church. I was serving and I was imparting life into those children, serving them with a joyful heart, seeing children, oh. people come with the children, children and serving them. My husband, um, when we were in, there was a church we were in for about five years. My husband was um, a minister there. He was ordained as a pastor there. And we were naming children. It was, oh. it was him and another pastor that was that were in charge of naming children. And those oh. children was popping in and out, in and out. Oh. And they were naming, naming, naming. We we're going to naming ceremonies. But we kept believing that God, one day you would, do, you would do our own. When my husband was down, God would use me to minister to him. When I was down, God would use him to minister to us. So it was, it was very important to work together um, with your partner because with this kind of situation I know the enemy brings disagreement amongst couples and this is where we need to stand our ground because that is where when the miracle is about to happen that is when those disagreements will come so I just implore you mommies and daddies on this call to stand your ground that no we will work together in unity together we will defeat infertility together we will defeat barrenness and together we'll carry our miracle babies so it's very important please be in your sync in sync with your partners it's extremely important another thing for me which was 
major was testimonies. Oh, testimonies. How I love testimonies. How I love people's testimonies of miracle babies. I would take a notebook and write down testimonies, names, and I'll go back to God that you did it for me, Start so, so, and so I don't know them. They only share their testimony, but Lord, you will do it for me. I will write it down. And then I'll start sharing people's testimony. I love sharing, mouthing, shouting it loud. God did it for X, Y, Z, because I know that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And what he has done for one, he do it for others. So I would, and I know God replicates testimonies. So I love sharing people's testimonies for others and I have seen it over and over again that the same God that did it for me will do it for others because God has replicated my son's testimonies and as he has done it with others he will do it for you in Jesus name you too you will share your testimony that people will shout and he would go around the world that yes truly God has done this for you I sowed sowing seeds was another thing we did we sowed seed to ministries we so sit into the life of God as led by the spirit please note I am emphasizing as led by the spirit we have to be led for what we are sowing so that we can reap the benefits of it I sowed into orphanages um we supported often we still support orphanages in um Syria alone and also I think maybe 10 years down the line I started supporting widows Widows in Sierra Leone will send monthly seeds to them. I still do it now. Send monthly to them. I support people in need and always blessing babies. Whenever I find, I go to a large church, so you can imagine that I can't know of everybody's naming ceremony. But once I found out if someone has a baby and it's someone I'm, I have a connection with, I will definitely bless them. So I will buy stuff for children. I remember there's a shop I used to go to to buy children's clothes. The man, a Malaysian man, he said to me, how many children do you have? You're always coming here to buy clothes. And I said, I have loads. Our children are many because those are my children as well. So please um, continue to sow seeds. If you've already been doing it, do not be wary. The Bible says, do not be wary in well-doing because you, you will reap if you faint not. Please do not be wary. Carry, carry on doing that. Now, there were lots of faith actions we took. And, you know, when I was preparing for this last night and I was taking notes of those things, Holy Spirit was bringing it to my remembrance. And I just know that it could only have been God. Remember, I said to you that I write down testimonies. Now, when I hear people's testimonies, what they say they do. I go back and I say, God, should I, do you want me to take this action? Should I do this? And I begin to do some of the acts they said they took in their testimony. So that's why it's so important for me to listen to people's testimonies. We would always buy baby's clothes. We were traveling a lot when we didn't have a son. And we would travel each time we go on holiday. I would always buy gifts for my children. Then we were believing God for um, twins. And then we were believing for triplets. God gave us a son that is like three. All those three kids we were believing for packaged in one. I think this boy is even like 10 children in one anyway. <laughs> for what God has given us. So we would buy clothes for children. I We have the children's nursery. I would decorate it with the children's clothes. Initially, we bought a Moses basket, a Moses crib. And we had I put it in the living room. You can imagine in our living room. I didn't hide it in the nursery. It was in our living room. So when people came in to see us, they would see that crib it was dressed it was i had the um i dressed it like it was ready a child was sleeping in it people will see it those that know we're believing they will continue praying with us children will come they will see they'll say auntie this is for baby where's the baby i'm like don't worry the baby's coming the baby's coming you know because children are inquisitive and bless them they're wondering what's happening i said babies they will come so that crib was in the corner of our living room for years for years after a while we graduated and i actually bought a cot bed and i put the cot bed in the in the baby's room and i would take the clothes of a boy two boys and a girl and lay it flat on that um on the crib I would go into the baby's room to pray. 
I would declare the word of God in um, Kenny Copeland's um, prayer book. I will pray it over those children at night. We would pray Bible app. The Bible app was constantly praying in the children's room through the night. We started calling them into a devotion. I started doing it and my husband would be like, what is wrong with that now? But after a while, he joined me and we'll call the names of their ch our children. We named them. We named our children before well before my son was born and i printed out those names and i pasted it on a fridge in the kitchen it was in the rooms upstairs so any guest that comes in i went into their kitchen they will see those names i had even forgotten it it was one of my friends that reminded me that wow for years and some of my those names are my my son's name now that oh gosh we've been seeing this name pasted on your fridge for so long yes we will paste those names of those children there we will call them each christmas i would make sure i have a christmas tree and under that christmas tree there will be gifts for my children i would wrap buy gifts and wrap it up for the children put them under the christmas tree Invariably, when my son came, the first year, there were too many gifts to open, apart from the ones people gave him, the ones we had bought for years and years. Second year, he's still opening those Christmas gifts now, and he still has some for this Christmas as well. There were lots of things we kept on doing because we just know that God is not a respect of persons. What he has done for one, he will do for all. You know, we kept trusting him and believing in him. What we also were do doing was we would serve the children. I bought children's plates, cups, and all that. So when I set the table for dinner, I will set the table for the children as well. I know a few of my friends came, they saw it, and they joined us with that. And I will serve them food. So after we've prayed, I will serve our food. I'll serve food into their plates. And after my husband and I, we finished eating. We would now eat those children food and we will say in the Yoruba language, and Jenwomo, we're eating from our children because we know those children will come and we know we would eat from their blessing. We will be blessed with them. We were doing all this faith action, doggedly trusting God and believing God would do it for us. We would also pray in the spirit was one of the things that God taught us, like praying a lot in the spirit. We would pray in the spirit, we'll be um, join hearts with people. I have a very good friend. I believe she's on this call. We would get together on Sunday evening. We would pray and pray and pray in the spirit just for direction, you know. So if you have friends that uh, will join you together, believing with you, get on together, pray in the spirit, try and pray for an hour, pray for 30 minutes, as long as you can pray together because there's power in agreement and praying the spirit clears the hair. It opens your eyes to things that you should do or things that God is not asking you to do. It's very important. I read books and one of the books I've already been talked about was um, Yewande Zakir's book, God's Waiting Room, Supernatural ja Childbirth by Jackie Mize, M-I-Z-E. -I, I read that book and I sold that book. I started sewing Supernatural Childbirth since in 2021. I would buy loads of it and anyone that gets married or having children or I know they're pregnant, I will sew that book to them. I, I read that book, I read it in and out and I started praying the prayers at the back of the book as if you already had those children. I started praying those prayers and declaring God's word upon them. So look for books that says pertinent to what you're trusting God for and delve into that book. Pray to God that the spirit of God that caused them to write that book, let that spirit enter into you so that you will begin because he said the spirit of God came in, you know, and he will bring light, he will shed the light of that testimony to you and you begin to see those miracles replicate in your lives in Jesus name. One of the things we did was paying our tithes and offering for the children. So at that before COVID, when we use tight envelopes, I'll put in, once we prepare our own tights and offering in the house, I'll prepare for the children as well and pay their tights. I also take, took another step. When I was in the main church, I'll pay my own offering and tights. But for my son, I would actually go to the children's church because they do offerings in the children's church. I'll actually 
put offering for my children in the children's church because I believe that my son is the, my children are going to be part of this children's church. So I started paying tithe in the children's church for my children. And to God be the glory today, my son is able to physically pay the um, offering in the children's church. So all these things really matter. Just keep taking those steps of faith. Keep taking those actions. Do not give up because God that did it for us would surely do it for you and visit you and do exceedingly and abundantly above that which you can ever ask or believe you know he will give you more than you desire when i see my son now it's more than we can ever have asked for you know what so many packages inside one child because of the lord god did it and the god that did it for us would surely do it for you also in jesus name one of the things i've also learned and pastor agatha talked about it in one of the prayer school is the power of imagination that after you've prayed begin to imagine it imagine you carrying those children imagine your pregnancy i'll look at myself in the mirror and i'll say abiola you are pregnant woman you are pregnant i'll walk to another mirror in the living room or in the um, bathroom you are pregnant when i glance anytime i glance at the mirror even in the office when i glance at the mirror maybe i go to the restroom or whatever i'll say woman you're pregnant i'll say to myself i began to see myself pregnant and then i bought loads of pregnancy clothes I bought loads that I couldn't use because I was pregnant just the year after COVID. So there wasn't much going out anyway. But there were loads of pregnancy clothes. Sometimes I would wear them. I didn't like to wear tight stuff around my tummy. I like to wear loose stuff. So it looks like I'm carrying pregnancy, you know. But God did it at the time he wanted to do it. And he glorified himself. Our confession is very important. Mommies and daddies on this call. Please stop calling yourself your names. Start calling yourself daddy somebody. Start calling yourself mommy somebody. The names of your children. Call your wife mama this mommy something. Call your, dad, your husband daddy this daddy something. That's what we were doing in the house. And do not be worried about what people say. It doesn't matter. The Bible says in Romans 4, 17, that the God that calleth that things that be not as though they are, begin to confess it with your own mouth, what you want. If it, mommy triplets, mommy twins, mommy what you want, daddy, what you want to be. Begin to speak it to each other. When people hear you call your husband that, and they think, oh, they don't have their children, don't worry, let them mock you. I've heard a man of God says that if he doesn't mock you, he cannot make you. Let them mock you. From that mocking, the Lord will turn it around to make you. Declare it and speak what you want. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Speak it out. Don't care who hears it. Don't care what they see. If they laugh at you, say it. If people ask you what's happening, say God has already done it because he has already done it. And very soon they will see the manifestation because God has given us power in our tongue. The power of life and death is in our tongue. And he says that those that love it will eat the food thereof. So let us begin to declare that power. In the words of God in our mouth, and we will see it manifest in Jesus' name. Write down the names of your children. Begin to call them into manifestation. And another thing I want would like to touch on is kingdom service. Please do not joke with your kingdom service. If you are in a church, be truly connected. Do not be a bench warmer in a church. Make sure you're serving in one capacity or the other. Make sure you're sowing the seed of your service because when you're doing this, you would be able to comfortably stand on Exodus 23, 25 and 26. It, and it would work for you in the name of Jesus because this scripture was such a powerful scripture for me. He said that it will bless you when you serve the Lord, when you serve your God, it will bless your bread and water. And it will take sickness away from your midst. None shall suffer miscarriage and or be barren in your land. And I will fulfill the number of your days. So it's very important that we are serving. Be serving. I heard a man of God say that when your cloud is full, your rain will drop. And it's in um, Ecclesiastical. 
when you are serving your sowing into into a cloud into your cloud you're sowing it it's going in there it's going into that massive cup and when the cloud is full the rain will surely drop down it says it in ecclesiastes 11 verse 3 you know so do not be wary in your service just serve joyfully do not let them see it on your face it says in um ecclesiastic 11 3 i just wanted to read it if the clouds are full of rain they empty themselves upon the heart. So once you keep sowing that seed of your kingdom service, praying for the ministry you're in, praying for the church, praying for your pastors, praying for the advancement of God's kingdom, praying for salvation of people, be, giving your servicing in different service units you're in. The, this, with this, you can joyfully hold on to Exodus 23, 25 to 26, and even 27. And the Lord will visit you. Your kingdom service will speak for you. Serve God with a joyful heart. That was what we did. I serving God, my husband serving God in his department as well. And we just did it. We just carried on serving God, which was why a lot of people didn't even know we were waiting for God on, on the Lord for children because we just went on doing it. You know, when there's a call for evangelism, we're out there winning souls for Christ. And I, I remember when I go out for evangelism, I'll say, God, that as I win souls for you, for your kingdom, you are adding it to my 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 children's um my children's bank because my own babies are also going to come forth in the name of Jesus and God honors it and of course prayers 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 praying in the Holy Ghost praying because prayer changes situation do not get weary in praying don't say I've done pray I don't I did so many prayers I did so many fasting I did three days I did seven days there was one fasting I came out it was just before my very good friend Fumi's wedding and my face looked so haggard, but well, I still went to the wedding anyway because I padded up and dressed up. But you would do fasting, you do prayers, but please carry on doing it because you would see the results. God will surely visit you and you will testify in Jesus' name. I just wanted to encourage us with a few things. One of the key things I want to encourage us on is please be thankful. Please be thankful. God is yet doing great and mighty things in your life. Where you are now, mommies and daddies, I'm not call, I won't call you sisters or brothers. You are mommies and daddies, mommies and daddies of nations. Where you are now is somebody else's prayer point. Remember that you probably have a friend or someone in your family still trusting God to get married. Be thankful that you are joyfully married to your husband, to your wife. Be thankful about that. Be have an act of gratitude towards God. Because the enemy will want you to focus on what is not working. But I tell you that you will be able to find that 90% or 95% of things are working. It's only the 5% that is not working. Do not focus on that 5%. Have a joyful heart. Have a heart of thanksgiving. Another thing is be careful of offenses. Be careful of offenses. Offenses can come in so many ways, but the key one also is offenses towards God. You might not do it physically, but in your heart, are you offended at God in your heart? Are you saying to God that why am I being delayed? Are you saying to God that God, you're delaying me? Are you saying to God, why are you doing, why have you not answered me? Please. Give no room to offend toward God or towards man, or especially towards your spouse. Because I know the enemy uses the situation to cause friction in the home. Sometimes he could say, oh, the, it's the husband's fault. Oh, it's the wife's fault. It is nobody's fault. It is the devil's fault. The only culprit in this situation is the devil. Please do not blame your wife. Do not blame your husband. It is the devil that is causing this. And please be all careful of offenses. It's very, very important. It is the devil's fault, not man's fault. Meditate on the word like we've said. Take pregnancy capsules and then forget. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Whoever has wronged you, whatever they have said, a lot, you get a lot of things said when you're in a waiting room. A lot of things get said. Some people might have in laws that are really not very nice in laws. To God be the glory, my in laws were fantastic people. 
I could not fault them one way or the other. They were always praying for us. But be careful that um, wherever in-laws or even friends, you know, or even church members knowingly or knowingly might have said something or done something concerning this you're waiting on the Lord, please forgive them. It's not about them. It's about you and it's about your relationship with God. And also, I want to encourage, especially the mummies on the calls, because I think it's also uh, Omont and all that. Please beware of mood swings. You know, when it, that mood swings wants to come, then go into the attitude of praise and joy and joy and joy. Go into attitude of praise and joy, joy to the Lord. You know, be joyful, be joyful to the Lord, because our God is faithful. Avoid those mood swings. Avoid it because God is a faithful God. He will turn it around and you will testify in Jesus' name. Amen. And also, please be a tighter. If you don't tight, please, I implore us, let the Lord minister to us. When I was waiting for the Lord, I didn't get into the situation of arguing with people. Maybe it's right to tight or not right to tight and all that. I just went to what the scriptures say. Tightening is a command from the Lord. And one of the key things he says in Malachi 3.11 that I would always go back to the Lord on, he says, he says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sex. Devourer comes that, that steals the seeds so that it will not destroy the fruit of your ground. The fruit of your womb will not be destroyed, nor shall you fail to bear fruit. Nor shall the vine, sorry, the vine fail to bear fruit for you in your season. So that was one of the key things I, I hold, held on to. Like, Lord, I am tightened, and this is your word. So I would take that verse 11 back to the Lord, that I am tightened, and this is what you're saying. Especially if there's any mommy here that's been going through the series of miscarriages, please go continue tightening and use the scripture to get your deliverance please seek medical help god will use medics for us do not just sit back seek medical help and if you've done it before do it continue to do it don't say because i've done something before i won't do it again i think it was the only ghost night only ghost night papa deboye did last month and one of the testimonies i heard was the lady that came in with um a child after 17 years, it was actually the 17 year old son she had that was carrying the baby. And she said that um, she had done IVF several times. They had spent so many money on it. And she said she wasn't going to do it again. And then they came to one Holy Ghost night and they heard a woman's testimony that said she carried on doing it. And Papa Oli, um, Adeboye said one, one key thing that helped her was that if you took exams and you failed, would you not do it again? Does that mean you won't do it again? But you will surely do it again. So whatever you've done in the past, if it hasn't worked, try it again. Pray if the Lord is leading you to do it. Try it again. Do it again. Do not give up. Because it hasn't worked before, doesn't mean it would work again. There's always one more thing to do. Please, there's always one more thing you can do. Seek the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you that what else should I do? What one more thing do you want me to do in this situation? And the Lord will, mean it, will help you in Jesus' name. And please be in sync with your husband. It's very important. And age is no barrier. Please do not let anyone tell you that your age, your eggs, your this, your that. God is a faithful God. I, God visited me at my age and I had my miracle baby. You will carry your pregnancy without stress. I carry this miracle babies without, my miracle baby without stress. So God will do the same for you in Jesus' name. So age is nothing. God will redeem the time for you. I also remember one of the prayers I would pray is that God, give me the body of a healthy 25-year-old to carry pregnancy. I always pray that prayer. And that was what God gave me. A healthy pregnancy was God gave me. So God will give that to you in Jesus' name. The Lord will redeem the time for you in the name of Jesus. And please do not be under condemnation. Do not let anyone condemn you and do not condemn yourself. Do not let any me bring anything to you that, oh, maybe because of something you did years back, years back. The Bible says that if you're in, if you're in Christ Jesus, all things have passed away. All things have become new. Do not let the enemy be begin to remind you of what you have done in the past. Even the Bible says in um, 
Isaiah, Isaiah, that even the lawful captives of the mighty can be set free. Isaiah 49, 24 to 26. Even if for some reason you have been in a you were in a position that you did something in the past, your lawful captives of the mighty would even be set free. Even if you're lawful to be in that captivity, the Lord said there is a setting free. So please do not be under condemnation. The Lord God will set you free. And remember that God is the baby maker. You cannot be a baby beggar. God is the baby maker. He has loads. He said that he is the one that gives good gifts. And he, why would he tell you to come back when he has it in his hands to give? And remember, it is God that gives conception. Ruth chapter 4 verse 13. He says that Moab went into Ruth, but God gave that conception. Ruth 4 verse 13. It is God that gives conception. And I believe that nothing is impossible for God to do. There is nothing that he would not do for Nothing is hard for God. So your own case will not be had in Jesus' name. So the first thing I want us to do right now is begin to thank the Lord for speaking to us. I'm conscious of the time. Thank God for speaking to us today. Thank God for a new revelation that he has given to us today. Thank God for the word that he has come forth. Father, I give you glory. Father, I give you praise. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for speaking to your people today. Oh God, I give you glory. I give you praise, oh God. I thank you, Father, because you are the baby maker. And because you are the baby maker, we cannot be a baby beggar. I thank you, Father, that you are the God of turn around. You are the God of change. Oh God, you are the one that gives good gifts unto your children. The Bible says every good and perfect gift has come from you, God. You are the one that gives good gifts, and nothing is impossible for you to do. Ah, this situation would not be impossible. I want you to call yourself by the name of your children. Call yourself daddy somebody. Call yourself mommy somebody. Begin to decree. Begin to speak it out. Let the devil hear it. Let people around you hear it. That's I am Mama Beti, I am Baba Beti, I am Mama this, I am Baba but that. Begin to declare it. So Begin to about speak it to the Lord. The Lord will minister to you. The Bible says in um, John 15, 16, that you are ordained to bear fruit. You are a fruitful man. You are a fruitful woman. God has created you and ordained you to bear fruit. You bring forth those miracle babies. Begin to call yourself by name. Call yourself by name. Do your, do your, do your, do your, do begin to call Mama this, Mama that. Call forth your twins. Call forth your triplets. Call forth your boys. Call forth your girls. They are coming forth. The, the spirit is released. The spirit has been released. The spirit of those children are released. Call them forth. Call them forth. They are in Tara Baba Baba. They are in Tara Toria Baba. They are in Tendele Baba. They are in Tara Baba. Begin to imagine your wife being pregnant. Begin to see that pregnancy test saying positive. See that pregnancy test saying positive. She did that pregnancy test. She did the first one. You showed positive. You quickly took another one. You showed positive. You see yourself go to your husband and say, Darling, see what God has done. You see yourself showing your positive pregnancy test to your husband. You see yourself getting pregnant. You see that pregnancy growing. You see yourself going for your first antenatal. You see yourself going for your second antenatal. You see yourself going for your first plan. You see yourself going for the second plan. First time is your second time is Begin to imagine your naming ceremony, what you are going to wear. So carrying your miracle baby in your hand. If they're twins, your husband will carry one. You carry the second one. If they're triplets, your friends will carry one. If they're quadruplets, your grand uh, your mom will carry the two. You see yourself carrying those children. Imagine those names that you're carrying. Imagine what you're going to wear. Imagine your headline. Imagine you in your makeup. Imagine your husband dressed up fully in this naming ceremony. Imagine your children's dedication in the church. Imagine you dancing, dancing to the front with people, inviting people to rejoice with you. God, you will do it. God, you will do it. Hari Andaraba Senderebo. Asha Hari Andaraba. Derebo. Shandaraba. We have seen it, oh God. As far as your eyes will see, that you will do. As far as the eyes of your people are still, oh God. You will do for them, oh God. To be themselves pregnant. They see themselves carrying their babies. 
That's okay, you have all that. I just want to encourage us to stay in that faith mode. Amen. Amen. That testimony was amazing. Can somebody just shout hallelujah? Thank you, God, for that testimony. Let's just shout hallelujah. Thank God. You didn't tell us your baby's name so we can say thank God for him, but we're oh, grateful. My son's name is Zachary, Zachary Boluatito Oluashogumiolo. <laughs> Ah, uh, Zachary, Olowu, God bless you. We're so grateful for your arrival. You have made us glad by arriving. God bless you. Hallelujah. We also want to thank God for the speedy arrival of our own children, that none of us will go empty-handed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we can see how the Lord has navigated our sister and her husband to the point of receiving what he had made available for them through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. What you have seen there is an account of how a, a brother and a sister were able to make their way to the table of the Lord to take what God has made available. The Bible says, no good thing will the Lord withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. And what does that mean to you? Those that have received the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are those that walk uprightly before him. And God says, he will not withhold any good thing from you. Our Amen. children are more than good things. And so Amen. he will not withhold it from us. He Amen. has done that he has made provision so that you would not be delayed nor denied so go ahead keep pressing in keep taking keep insisting that it is mine i take it by faith i take it by force in the name of jesus what you must understand is that you have an adversary First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. We have an adversary. His name is the devil. He's not your mother-in-law. He's not your sister-in-law. He's not the NHS. He's not he's not anything physical. Paul said, We war not against flesh and blood. We have an adversary. And so that's why Peter said, resist him steadfastly. Don't mm -hmm. give up. Don't mm -hmm. don't don't back down. Don't back off. Don't retreat. Don't surrender. The, 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 the matching order is keep moving, keep pressing, keep advancing until you recover all in the name of Jesus. That is the, that is the command of the commander in chief. Keep pressing, keep moving, no retreat, no surrender, no backing off, no backing down. There, there are no other orders available to you other than keep going. Take Hold, lay hold on eternal life. Hallelujah. Paul said to keep don't, don't fighting, worry. fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Hallelujah. So we we in this place, we believe that there is availability, that, there's, that God has provided for us, but we must continue to learn to receive. Mm -hmm. Learn to receive. If you were at prayer school, you would have learned that it is not, it's not a case of God going to create children. No, 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 no. When you came to the earth through your parents, it wasn't because God just created you. No, God has created. He has made available. It's just that your parents were able to come into, into alignment with the laws of producing you. And that is exactly what we're saying, that as we continue to press in against the enemy of our soul, we come into alignment with the law of reproduction and mm -hmm. children will be the, the, the um, easiest outcome. Amen. So I'm, I'm congratulating you in advance and I want you to congratulate yourself well in advance. I love when she said that praises, she, that they used to have praise she used to have times of praising God in advance. Mm. I know for me, for me, mm. QJ used to say that about her testimony as well. She would just, they would just take out like, uh, 
two, three days. Instead of, I mean, you might want to do prayer and fasting, of which for me is an expert. But sometimes you just take out days as well, just praising God and praising God. Now you say, oh, what am I praising God for? Well, mm -hmm. you're praising God because you know that your God is not the problem. He has provided. So why would you praise him? Mm -hmm. If he has done you well, then go ahead and praise him. Unless you think he's owing you, unless you think he hasn't done you well. I remember one of the sisters that I'm sure one day she share her testimony with us. He, I remember we had a full blown um, um, we had a full blown naming ceremony in advance on behalf of of the of the baby that that came maybe like. 10 years after. Why? Because we just believed. We just believed. And when you have believed, you do things that those that believe have, have um, do. I mean, right. if you if you were told that there is... Um, they did if you, name a ceremony for a child that was not born. Yes, we did. Thank you. We did name a ceremony for a child that was not born. We named the baby. We had we had, we had had suya. We had a pepper soup. We had... It was a party. And God or not our faith. Amen. It, we did not see, see the outcome the next day because that's another thing. You might say, oh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Let me tell you something. All the things you're saying didn't happen are happening in the spirit. <laughs> Glory be to God. Your job is to continue to believe until what is in the spirit travels into the physical. That's that's why it's it, that's why it looks like it's taking time because it's taking you time, not God. It's taking you time to bring it from the spirit yes. to the physical. We want to tell God, God, please bring it from the spirit to the physical. God can't do that for you because you are the one that is in charge on the earth. He said the earth he has given to the children of men. So you are the one that has to connect that with the spirit, that. take that which is in the spirit and bring it over to the physical. Amen. And I, I'm I'm saying all this uh, to 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 let you know that God is for you. God is in your favor. God is has, has done by sending Jesus. God has fulfilled all of your desires. Oh, Agatha, why is it not looking like he has fulfilled it? Why does it look like I'm still I'm still searching and seeking? It's because it's because you're reading you're reading a side of the book that makes you think that you are still waiting. No. God has already provided for us, and he has made that provision in the presence of our enemies. And so as people, as his, as his people on the earth, you then need to wage war, <laughs> dispersing all the oppositions to take what belongs to you. So the, the length of time it takes you to take what belongs to you might be different for A, B, and C. So don't let anybody's race bother you. Don't say, ah, that person got married yeah, and within nine months they were, they were pregnant. You do, we don't know the race that they are fighting. We don't know the problems that the enemy has put in their way. Okay? The, the enemy may have specialized in their way that, look, you can have children, but you can't have money. And then they, you, see, you see the situations like that people are struggling. And you're wondering how they have children. Why do they have Listen, the devil hates you. He hates the person. Whether it's the person that doesn't have children or the person that doesn't have money, the devil just hates us. And so he just piles and piles positions against us so that we cannot enjoy what our father has provided for us but we're not going to listen to him he can go to hell and roast for all we care we are the seed of god and indeed we will we will see the salvation as so over so we will touch taste and handle our desires that we have believed for in the name of of Jesus. So let's say congratulations to one another again as we begin to bring our prayers to a close and we begin to say, Lord, you are a faithful God. You are a faithful God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You are a faithful God. Thank you, Father. We honor you. We glorify you. We say blessed be your holy name in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is anybody still out there? Hallelujah. So, well, here at the here at the My Godly Seed, just want to encourage you. Join us every month. It's just once a month. Join us. Sometimes we will bring a guest like Sister Biola that has graciously 
poured out from her testimony to us. Trust me, she can't finish that testimony to Jesus return. But the part that she has poured to us is the one we need today. And we're so grateful that we could be a part, we could share in your joy. Sister Viola, thank you so much. The, the unction on that testimony continues to reverberate in our lives. And we know that we too will come back and testify in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to congratulate everyone here believing God for the fruit of the womb. I believe God with you. I believe that you would announce your testimony to us speedily. In very in no time, in the name of Jesus, you will no longer be delayed nor denied. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We continue in this journey of receiving from the table of the Lord. And you and I will continue to encourage one another. Let's hold each other's hands. Once a month we meet here. If you want to join our mailing list for this particular um for this particular group, it's on the screen. My godly seed PBC at OAC foundation.org.uk or you might we just want to send it to prayer book camp and let us know it's for my godly seed and then we would redirect you god bless you thank you so much we are so grateful that you turned up hallelujah father lord we thank you this morning thank you because every word that you speak is like rain that falls on the earth it does not return to you for it. It goes all the way to the earth, water the earth, nourish the earth before it returns into the air as cloud again. Lord, so is the word that comes out of your mouth. And I'm just paraphrasing Isaiah 55 verse 11. It does not return to you for it. But we're saying that your word concerning fruitfulness, fertility, in our lives, it returns to you as testimonies and gratitude in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak over every family represented here, whether it's a friend or is a sister or mother or brother or is even the couple themselves. Lord, we speak pro reproduction we speak fertility we speak multiplication according to their heart's desire in the name of jesus we welcome the arrival of sons daughters from for every household represented here in the name of jesus in advance lord we're saying thank you for making us mothers for making us fathers for making us joyful custodians of the heritage of our God. Thank you, Abba Father. It is to you alone we owe all the praise and all the honor, all the gratitude in Jesus' precious precious name. Amen. Like we said, we're here once a month. It's the fourth Saturday of the month. Every month we're here. Next month we'll be here. We'll be praying. You know, we've had a wonderful testimony today. We need to spend time praying based on the things that we have learned today. So come with us in October. It will be a gracious time of prayer. God bless you and have a great, great time in the Lord. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now 